QuickBooks Online 2024 Sales by Customer Graphs. Get ready and relax because it's so easy using QuickBooks Online, you'd think it'd be a crime. But it's not, unless possibly you're doing bookkeeping for like the Clintons or something, at which point you'd probably have Bleach Bit at the ready in any. Anyways, let's get into it. Here we are online in our browser, searching for QuickBooks Online Test Drive, looking for the result that has Intuit.com in the URL, Intuit being the owner of QuickBooks. We're going to select that United States version of the software here and verify that we're not a robot. I'm not a robot, but I do my work in a rowboat. Is that okay, QuickBooks? Is that okay to have a rowboat that I do my work? I'm going to close up the here. Let's open the reports on the left-hand side. And then in the favorites, like we do every time, we're going to be right-clicking on that balance sheet to open link in a new tab. Then we'll right-click the P&L, the profit and loss, otherwise known as the income statement. Open that in a new tab. Let's go to that middle tab. We opened up the hamburger. Close it up. How are we supposed to eat it when the bun is off of the hamburger? We're going to then change the range going back to 2023 0101-23 tab, 1231-23 tab. First, a word from our sponsor. <laughs> Yeah, uh, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like this CPA thinking cap, for example. CPA thinking CAP. You see what we did with like with the letters? And this CPA thinking cap is not just for CPAs either anyone can and should have at least one possibly multiple cpa thinking caps why because based on our scientific survey of five people all of whom directly profit from the sale of these cpa thinking caps wearing this cpa thinking cap without a doubt according to the survey increases accounting productivity tenfold yeah at least yeah, apparently the hat actually channels like accounting energy from the quantum field ether directly into your head, allowing you to navigate spreadsheets faster. It's kind of like how in like the matrix when Neo learns Kung Fu, or at least that's what the scientific survey is saying. So get one because the scientific survey participants could really use some extra cash. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Running it because we want to refresh. Go into the tab to the right, close up the hamburger, and once again, bringing it back. 010123 tab, 123123 tab. Run it so we can be refreshed. Now we're fresh. And that's the setup process we do every time. These are the major two financial statement reports. All other reports generally giving more information, more detail about one or multiple line items on these two major financial statement reports. We're now looking into making graphs and pie charts, which can give a little bit more visuals, a little bit more information, possibly impress our clients a bit more. So how can we do that? Well, we've looked at uh, well, the places we can do that most likely would be the income area where you might want to start thinking about making graphs. And we talked about a graph by customer last time. We'll do a graph by item this time, inventory or service items. Then we also went to the balance sheet and we did a graph on the accounts receivable, which you would only have if you're doing an accrual base basis for the revenue cycle, tracking customers that need to pay you. But that's an easy one to make a graph of. You also might do a graph with the accounts payable, which again, you would only have if you're entering bills on an accrual method for your payables. You also could do a graph for just your total assets, in which case, let me just point that out if I go over here and we look at our summary balance sheet, we go down to the balance sheet summary, right click and open that one in a new tab. Then another easy graph you might make is to take your total assets and break them out by the category of the assets. See how here you have the current assets. You might have to do a little bit more formatting because if you have other assets other than current assets, you might have some more drop downs, but this will give you a pretty nice breakout, which is similar to pie charts you might see in like financial 
uh, when you're investing, right? Because this is the total of your assets, right? You could do the same for your liabilities. That would be a pretty easy graph to make if you export to Excel and you made a pie chart of like your current liabilities, for example. And so that's just an idea. But this time we're going on over to the income statement once again. Now the income statement on the income side of things, we usually don't have a whole lot of accounts on the income statement because usually we just want a few accounts on the income statement, which we can further break out into more detail with sub ledger reports, such as income by customer we looked at last time or income by item service or inventory item which we will do this time. If you do have a lot of income accounts, you could just export the income accounts like this and then and then basically do a pie chart of the actual income accounts as well if you want if there's another idea that you can make a pie chart from that might be useful depending on the industry and business that you are in. So note that we're going to start by just like we did last time a, a sales subledger but this time the subledger will be by item remember that you're only going to have those subledgers if when you enter the data for income you're using the sales forms of invoices and sales receipts if you're using a bank deposit through the bank feeds you will most likely lose the added depth of other financial subledgers like the income by customer and income by account reports that might be well worth it if it's a lot easier to do that, if you have a simple business structure like gig work that you're just recording income as it goes through the bank. Uh, and also note that remember that the sub ledgers will not possibly tie out exactly to total income as they should if you recorded something to income without applying a customer or item to it. In this case, an item. That's what we're looking at. That's because QuickBooks does not force us to record an item every time we post something to income, although we typically will record an item if we use the in invoice and sales receipts forms every time we record something to income. That is different than the balance sheet reports of accounts receivable and accounts payable, which will basically always tie out to the sub ledger because QuickBooks will force us to add a customer or vendor to, to every time we hit those accounts so that they do force us to have a sub ledger that is in balance now if the if the difference is in material as it will be with this report then when we make our graphs we might want to tie into what's on the balance sheet or on the income statement so that we make sure everything ties out on the reports that we're making so let me show you what i mean let's go to the tab to the left we're going into the reports closing up the hamburger close up that hamburger and then we're going to go it's almost food time over here now that we're now that i think about it hamburgers sound good i would like a hamburger but okay focus i'm in the sales and customers area and then we're over here sales by customer we want uh, the sales by product and we want the summary this time so we've got the sales by product summary right click i'm going to open that link in a new tab it's opening to the right so let's go there close up the ham boogie let's change that range up top going from 010123 tab 123123 and run it so we can refresh it now this is a bit more detailed of a report it's going to have more information if you sell actual inventory items as opposed to the service items and it's also more complex because we have these uh drop downs which i can't collapse as easily see i don't have the capacity to collapse them as we did with the other reports so what i really want from this report is basically just the amounts over here the percentages could work too we could use that uh, but really i just want this column so i could export this to excel and clean it up fairly easily and so we'll do a little bit more work to do that this time if you don't have a lot of these categories it would make it easier as well because note like i might make my table my pie chart by just category like this so then there would only be like three items in it that would probably be the easiest thing to do or maybe i want the detail so so now i just want the detail of each line item uh that we have so i'll probably try to try to d break it down to just by account or item category design 
uh, landscaping and pest control. So it would be great if I can export just this, but I don't think it's gonna let me because I think when I export it to Excel, it's gonna expand this out again. So it might be even easier just to type this into Excel, right? I could just type doot, 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 and then these numbers into Excel, and that would be, that would be great. But let's do the export thing so we can practice. I'm gonna hit the drop down. We're gonna export to Excel, and then I'll open it up to check it out, remembering that uh, we're gonna try to put this, enable the editing, see it expanded it all again. I knew it, I told you. I told you it would do that. Okay, we're gonna add this to the to our worksheet report over here. Now, uh, note that if you don't have this stuff over here, that's okay, but we're gonna imagine that we have all of our reports and we wanna add our graphs to the end of it to make them more fancy so we can impress our clients a bit more than the other guy. The other guy's lazy, doesn't take the extra step, go the extra mile, in order to to get things done, right? That's what I'm talking about. So in any case, we're gonna go back on over, we're gonna right click on this tab, I'm just gonna move it over. If, if you don't have that other worksheet, you don't have to move it over, but I'm gonna move it, move it over and I'm gonna hit the drop down, and we're gonna move it to the month end reports. And I'm not gonna copy it, I'm just gonna move it, boom. Tab, over here, I'm gonna pull it to the right, I want it on the last thing. So there it is, double clicking on it. So there's our sales by product, product, I'll just say sales by product data. So this will be our data tab. I'm gonna clean it up. Hopefully it's gonna be a little bit more difficult to clean up than some of the other reports, but that's what we're practicing here. And I'll do this fairly quickly because we've seen a similar process in the past. This would be similar to what you might have to do if you wanted to look at your assets for example and you export your balance sheet and just clean it down so you just have your assets that you want to make a pie chart from or something like that all right so let's hold down control scroll up a bit and i don't need the header so i'm going to clean out the header i'll just take all of this stuff and the column i want by the way is just this amount column so i'm going to note that in my mind and then i'm going to just delete all of the header stuff Duh. and then the columns do they have any formulas in it is what I'm looking for. Is there a formula in here? I'm looking at the formula bar up here. Are there formulae? Even this isn't a formula. So I think we're safe. So no formulas. Okay. So I can just delete all the columns except for that column and I don't think it'll mess anything up. Let's let's delete the totals first though. Even the total doesn't anyway. So let's delete the total. I'm going to select this and right click and delete the totals and then i'll delete the columns i don't need i don't need column b right click and delete i don't need columns c to g right click and delete so this is all i need now notice that this one is not formatted the way i would like it to be let me try to format see how it has this triangle here that's going to mess it up because it's not in number format really uh, it's number stored as text. So that's not good. I could try to format paint and see if that works to get rid of that. I'm going to put my cursor over here and format paint. I'll format paint the entire worksheet. Format paint the entire worksheet. It still didn't get rid of the green stuff. So, and, and that's going to mess up my formatting. So the next thing I can do is I can click on it and I get this drop down and I want to convert it to a number. If you just double click on it, it'll go away as well. But I'd like to do that so I don't have to do it to every cell. So I could select this whole thing from here down to here, that all the ones that have that green thing on it, that's, and then just do them all at the same time, hitting the drop down, convert to number. That's what we wanna see. All right, then I'll select the entire page again, right click on this thing, and let's format the cells. Let's make it currency, negative numbers bracketed and red, Get rid of the decimals, don't need them. We don't want a dollar sign, no dollar sign, and okay. Let's make it bold, home tab, font group, bold. It is bold. Okay, so now I'm just gonna delete all the details. So this is the design stuff here. Okay, under the design, here's the parent category, all the subcategory, and then a subcategory of a subcategory. This is a, the total of the subcategory of the subcategory. 
subcategory, subcategory, and then the total design, which is not a formula, it's just a hard-coded number. So I could just delete basically everything from here to here, and I just want the total design. So I'm just gonna right-click and delete all of that. And then I'm just gonna do the same thing, landscaping. This is the parent, subcategory, 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 and then subcategory, and then subcategory of a subcategory, subcategory of a subcategory, the total of the subcategory of a subcategory, and then the subcategory, another one in there, and then the total of the subcategories, which include the sub subcategories in there. So this is not a formula. So I could just delete everything from like here to here. I don't need any of that. I'm just going to delete all that. And then this is the same thing. Here's the parent and here's the, the subcategory and here's the total. So all I need is the total delete this to do it. And then I have the not specified, which is its own category of 90. So let's, let's check that out. Let's sum it up and just see if I messed anything up. Equals the sum. See if this still ties out to what's on my report over here. It should be at 10.280.05. So let's say, is that what it is? 10.280. So notice now I just want to check that this 10.280.05 does not tie out to what's on the income statement which should be, which is at total income is actually at 10,201 about. So I'm actually gonna fix it here. I'm just gonna say, okay, it should be 10,001. And what I'll do is I'll just dump it into the not specified area. So I'll delete this for now. It should be 10,201. Whoa, wait a second. It should be 10,201, 10,201. And so this needs to be, and then if I subtract these two out, then it's, I'll have my plug here of 169. So now I've tied it in exactly to the, what did I? This should be 10, this needs to be a negative. That's weird. That's kind of ugly. I don't really like that. But we'll do, that ties in, at least it ties in exactly 10, 201. To the to the total so that's we're okay with that i'm going to be okay with that it's kind of weird having a negative i don't know i'm not comfortable with this i'm not comfortable with this okay we'll just push forward here this is the idea and then we could we could then uh sort this so i'm going to select these we can then go to the data and then filters we could sort it that way, but I like putting a table in it. So I'm going to insert a table and then make a table. And this will be the items. I could say inventory items or items. And then, and then I'll just put item dollar amount. I'll say dollar amount. Uh, it's probably not the best label, but I'll do that. And then I'm going to say, then we'll, we, we want this from going from highest to lowest, which is already in that order. So I'm sorting from Z to A. So that looks good. And then we can simply make our charts. Once again, we have a, to let's put a total on it too. So we can see where the total is. So I can go home tab. I can go, I can go table designs, total it, totaled it, totally totaled it. And then we could do the percent. Let's do the percent of total, which is simply going to be this divided by the total. Excel will put it all the way down because we have it in a table format and then home tab number percentify so we can recognize and then we'll sum it up equals the sum. I could just say alt equals and it, oh, it doesn't do it because it's in a table. Let's just hit the drop down and say we want to sum it. Okay, so there it is. And then I can do a pie chart just like we've done before. We'll select these items and say, let's make it into a pie chart. We're gonna go drop down. Let's make it into one of them, one of them new fancy fangled ones they have these days. One of them new fancy fanglers. So we have that one. And then I could say, maybe I want the legend. I want the legend on the right. I'm on the legend on the right maybe and then the data labels 
that's in numbers. So maybe I want the data labels in percent, more options, data labels as a percent, getting rid of the values. Okay. Uh, and then these last two are kind of on top of each other here. So it probably I should probably combine these last two. Uh, but I'll just oh wait, I'll just pull them out here. So that you can see them. Even if I combine those last two, it's still negative. Oh, oh, what did I do there? How could it be negative? Whatever. I'm gonna, okay. So then we can do, and now if I wanted to make that chart the other way, I could just select this, control shift. So I have non adjacent, or I'm just hitting shift, or I'm holding down control as I select both of them. Cause then we could have inserted it just with the pie chart and done the fancy thing over here. And then if I added the labels, it would already be in a percentage format, right? But the pie chart lets you do that the other way. Then I can also say, I want to fancy another bar chart. Let's just do the bar chart. The other way, the other charts we can do are the bar charts like this. We did that. We haven't done like just a normal bar chart. We did the fancy one like that. We did, we oh, let's do a 3D on its side. 3D. Remember, they have other options here too. So you could try to use one of these where they have this fancy one. But let's do the 3D on its side. We haven't done that one yet. So, okay. Either of these is fine. And then we can change the color if we wanted to. And so then there's that one. There is that. And then I can select the dropping down. I can put the data labs in there if I wanted to. Okay, so something like that, you know, and then I can put so so now we can put this on another tab to the right, so that so that I don't want my data in it. So this will be my data tab, I'm going to actually put the graphs to the right. So I made a new one. I'm going to double click on this one, copy it, double click on this one, paste it, but without the data at the end. And then I'll just cut this control uh, or cut, right click, cut, right click, paste it. And then I'll take this one and I'll cut this one, right click, cut, and then we'll paste it here as well. I want to see, I want to try to position that. So I'll go tab to the right, tab to the left. I want to make it landscape. This one particularly looks like it might look good on a landscape type of vista. So we'll hit the drop down and select landscape it didn't do it again let's it's because i'm on it that's why it's doing that aha uh -huh. i figured it out i figured it out so let's make this one larger this one is more of a box so it doesn't really need the whole landscape vista possibly but we could still do it and then maybe i can make the key could be bigger if how would i I want to put the size. Oh, that's way too large. Something, something like that. And then I'd probably want to make these bigger too, since I'm, oh yeah, that's impressive. The title's too small. Why do you have this little teeny title? Okay, whatever, something like that. You get the idea. And then I can put this one is designed. This one has been, this one's made for landscape because it's a long, I'll put that one like in the middle. We can probably center it in the middle of the page here. Okay. Okay. Let's check it out now. Now the problem is this, this tab is still going to print out with this data here and I don't want that. So I'm going to show you, we've seen it before, but we'll just check that out. So if I was to print this, print in the entire workbook, uh, Oh, I can't do it because I'm on the graph, I think. So if I go over here and I click off of the graph, then it's going to let me do it. That's the problem. That's the problem. You're the problem. Okay. That was well, a little harsh. Let's go to the entire workbook. 
And then if we scroll down, then, so these are my graphs, but then when I get to this graph, that's a nice one. See, it has that thing there. I don't want that. I don't want that. And then, then it has my graph and they're on two separate pages, which I put on two sides this time instead of one above the other. So let's go back on over and say, okay, I'm going to fix that. I'm going to hide this one, right click and hide it. And so now I should be able to print all of this stuff on one PDF file, give it to the client in one attachment or one, one file in a cloud drive or however I want to distribute it. And it'll look, this is what it'll look like. It'll have all of this in it. And then like the graphs, there's the AP, the sales, and I, I should make the titles better and whatnot, but you get the idea. That's the point. It's the idea I'm after. We'll hit the print button and then I'm going to save it to here. Now, before I look at it in there for the final look, note that if I select from here, I hold down shift to here, there's hidden, there's hidden stuff. So you can right click and unhide to see all of the hiddens. Now I hold down, I held down shift so I can select all of them at one time and then okay. And now all of the data tabs have been revealed. So the mystery, the, we went behind the curtain and we saw Mr. Oz or from that one lady that has the shoes that she taps together that are red, that movie. Let's open up the PDF and close up. Okay, and then if I look at it now, I, I know we can still format it better, but the, but again, the I, this is a landscape view. It's still vertical. That looks good. That's good. And then we get to our graphs down here, which is like someone's reading this and they're like, that's good. That's like the norm of what I would expect. That's the minimum I expect from the, oh my goodness though. Look at there's graph. They put charts in the, th look at that. I don't know what it even means, but it's, it's Hermosa. It's just beautiful. We got the AP. Wow. Give this guy, whoever is our bookkeeper. I think they deserve a raise. I'm, I'm just going to, I don't care what they put on the invoice. I'm just going to give them like a thousand dollars right now. So in any case, there it is.